I'm giving you context to who's speaking to you. Because I didn't come from champions, I didn't come from success, I came from the gutters. Stupidest kid in town. Broken household, worst family situation. Physically, I was 5'10 in fifth grade. <laughs> Shaggy red hair, I looked like Ronald McDonald, it was ridiculous. <laughs> But, but didn't stand a chance in the world. Today, again, face of a $3 billion company, run my own company, they made a documentary on my life story that's on Hulu, it was up for Academy Award. Hollywood right now is making a blindside soul surfer movie based on the documentary. I travel the world to help people. I speak to over 400,000 people worldwide a year. I elevate others. I'm not a loser. Only thing I really ever failed to do is fail. So how did I blossom? How did I become that? Sports changed the game for me a little bit. I started playing soccer first. I was an awful soccer player. Youth sports, everyone throws their kid into soccer. I was awful at it. Then I would play football. I was so massive in football. Coach had me offense and defense aligned. He pretty much instructed me just to fall forward and crush everybody, so that's all I did. And then I tried out for basketball. First time I tried out for basketball was in seventh grade. And I tried out for the basketball team. I was 6'4". Disgusting. V5. <laughs> and this... Uh, this coach, after tryouts, he pulled me aside. He explained to me something. That basketball was a two-armed sport. Try something else. And he cut me from the team. What a jerk, huh? <laughs> but this is where my life took a change. I'm very blessed this happened. Very strong believer. We're all just one mentor away from our whole lives changing. And a man in a neighboring city ran an AAU program, a travel basketball team, a club team. He, he was nationally ranked. His, his team, the Outlaws, 17, 18 year old, college bound D1 athletes. These guys were incredible. He heard about this one armed kid, couldn't even make his seventh grade team. And whatever was in his heart, he, he brought me on. I got dunked on on trouts probably 100 times. It was awful, but he changed my life, changed my perspective. He literally pointed me. He was my compass in the right direction. One day he came up to me. He's like, Kevin, when you play basketball, why don't you use that arm? I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, that arm, why don't you use it? I was like, chill, bro. I don't have an arm, right? That's the whole thing. <laughs> He's like, no, man, that thing's a weapon. This thing, guys, they call it my nub. Can I get a volunteer? Why don't you come up here real quick? Steven, give it up for him. Come up on stage. Oh, man. Whew, you beautiful guy. Here it is. Steven, so will you guys understand this arm? Were your guys' bones separating your forearm, reconnecting the wrist? Mine was just like, nah, not going to do that. So these are two bones. They're like little daggers. You getting nervous, Steven? No? You ever been nubbed before? Actually, yes. You've been nubbed before? You lead a strange life, brother. I love it. <laughs> I'm going to give you a nub on the side if you're okay with that. I'm good. How'd that feel? You're pretty tough. Uncomfortable. <laughs> you liked it. <laughs> I want you to pull my arm down, Steven. Pull it down. Yeah. Use both arms if you want. We got on that nub muscle, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Strong man. It's pretty glorious. Thank you. Give it up for Steven again. Appreciate you. <laughs> I'm telling you, this world made me the world's dirtiest basketball player. There's nothing in the rule book against nubbing people. I'd post up on the block, give the other player like a little nub in the side like this. <laughs> the refs can't see it. Super sneaky. The other guy gets stabbed by this thing all game. He's like, tries to fight me. The ref's like, why are you trying to fight the one-armed guy? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Power of the nub. But the difference is, I was born with one arm, you were born with two, and I've been all over this planet, and I've never seen somebody that wasn't special in their own way. It sounds cliche, but it's the absolute truth. And my life sucked. I told you 1% of how crappy my life was. It was worse than you could imagine. And I'm going to tell you the epitome of everything I hated about this arm. I was born with it. I didn't choose it. Shark didn't bite it off. Didn't get in a car accident. I had it, and I hated it. I hated looking at mirrors. I used to wear long sleeve shirts, tuck a sleeve in my pocket. I, I was just embarrassed. Girls were ruthless. I had no confidence at all. And this coach, essentially, he couldn't grow it out. He couldn't fix it. What he did through basketball is he allowed me to embrace it. Mentally, just to own it. Made my greatest weakness my greatest strength. Just by accepting myself. You need to hear those words because I'm up here with one arm and I'm looking at an audience of a bunch of people that have a nub too. Even you, Steven. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys something. We all have insecurities, we all have weaknesses, everybody wants to be perfect. I've never met a perfect human being before. And we get defensive about that. But owning 
your perfect imperfections, that's how you win. Because I'll tell you what, I didn't grow an arm out, but I accepted this arm. Roy Williams at UNC, John Calperi at Kentucky, Bobby Knight, some of the best college basketball coaches of all time have told me if I had two arms, I'd be the number one draft pick in the NBA. If you gave me a left arm today, I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't take it. Because I love this thing. And honestly, looking in the mirror, loving yourself right back, that's how your life changes because if you can accept yourself and embrace yourself, the world can embrace you too. I love this guy. Steven loves it too, don't you, buddy? <laughs> a nub in your life. But you need to hear those words. You'll be so much more successful and happy by owning your nub. Promise you that.